Rick Perry's actions speak louder than words. Everything he's done so far tells the world, I'm running for president. And our inside sources confirm that's exactly what he's planning to do. That's right. Texas Governor Rick Perry has announced that he's running for the Republican nomination for president in 2012. And you're hearing it here first at Infowars.com. Now, as the world media tunes in to this video, they're saying, well, where else do we have this information? Well, you see, officially, Rick Perry hasn't announced that he's running for president. But in the real world, he has. And I want to talk about that right now. Almost four years ago, I released a film called Endgame, Blueprint for Global Enslavement, where we predicted that Rick Perry would be running for president coming up in 2012. Now, Jim, my governor, Rick Perry, it's in the front of the Dallas Morning News. The headline reads, Texas Governor Rick Perry to attend Bilderberg. What does it mean to have the governor of Texas in the Dallas Morning News just admitting he's going to Bilderberg Group? It means he's a potential president. Officially, uh, Bilderberg considers Governor Rick Perry a potential president of the United States. And he indeed is now positioning himself for that. You see, he told you that he had a pledge that he was not going to run for president in 2012, but now he's rethinking that pledge. To go through all the data is mind-boggling, but... Bottom line here, we have sources inside Fox News. We have sources inside Rick Perry's security detail. After all, I live here in Austin, Texas, been on the radio and TV for 16-plus years. And we've known that for more than a decade, Rick Perry has been groomed to run for president by none other than Karl Rove, who back in the mid-1990s got him to flip from Democrat to Republican. And he was in that same stable as Senator Graham, uh, of course, later President Bush, and now Governor Rick Perry. And so it was Karl Rove who basically uh, put him in the position he is today. The inside baseball from sources in media, Texas Monthly, Fox News, inside the Perry camp, including people that work not just in his security, but in his office, Everything from day one has been about Rick Perry being president. And now the media is saying he is the front runner, even when he has not even announced yet. So Rick Perry let us know that he had announced for president with the establishment, with the people that bankroll presidential candidates when he went to Bilderberg in 2007. And we were on the scene documenting the fact that Rick Perry was basically there uh, begging to be the heir apparent and that he was chosen. The modern political manipulators are masters at building up a candidate as the answer to all your problems. Everybody was mad at George W. Bush. So here comes Barack H. Obama, financed by the very same Wall Street interest. We are on record calling it that Rick Perry would be positioned to run for president. And now it's happening. But he plays the part of this reluctant candidate. Oh, dear, I've put out the presidential book of Fed Up. Oh, dear, I'm going to all the big conservative conferences and talking about how much I love Jesus. Oh, dear, I don't want to run. And then Rush Limbaugh and all the other big kingmakers come out and say, come on, Perry, we're drafting you. You've got to do it. You're the only one that will save us. The whole thing is 100% scripted. So let's look at Rick Perry's record. We already talked about the fact that he was a Democrat who was flipped uh, by Karl Rove. But since then, as he rose up through Texas politics to the governorship, we have seen a extremely duplicitous politician in an overall field of lying scallywags. He is a master manipulator. Let's fast forward to 2007, the incumbent governor, Travels to Bilderberg 
to be vetted by the global elite, just as Bill Clinton, the obscure Arkansas governor, traveled there in 1991 to then be catapulted in 1992 and 93 to the presidency of the United States. A few years later, the obscure, even more obscure, member of parliament, Tony Blair, went to Bilderberg, bowed down before them, pledged to push England into the European Union. He becomes the new heir apparent and is put in as British prime minister. Well, Rick Perry had studied history, and his advisors had explained to him that bowing down to the globalists was key. But first, he had to prove himself to them. He had to hand over the Texas power plant infrastructure to private offshore consortiums. He had to sign over more than 8,000 miles of paid-for Texas roads directly to the private Spanish company Centra and put tolls on those roads. And when the Texas legislature voted by an overwhelming majority to stop the Trans-Texas North American Union highway system, Rick Perry came in and vetoed it. But that wasn't enough to prove himself. He then came out in a giant criminal hoax and said, all Texas schoolgirls must take the Gardasil vaccine. It is the law. I am commanding you. Well, first off, a governor can't do that. All he did was recommend it be on the list of recommended vaccines to the state health department. Then it came out that Gardasil was a product that the big pharma didn't want to put on the market because it was killing girls in the trials. And so by government mandating it, vaccine protection laws kicked in that protected the companies from liability, from the deaths they knew would result from this dangerous live virus vaccine being put on the market. But something else happened in that key year of 2007. Ron Paul was announcing his run for the presidency out of Texas. The Tea Parties formed right here in this state and had huge marches rebuking the Democrats, but also George W. Bush for his tax and spend system and all of his wars. Rick Perry in 2008, 2009 was being booed at Republican events. Suddenly he shifted gears. He said, why I kill coyotes in the middle of Austin while I'm jogging. I want Texas to secede. I'm against the new world order. Down with their world government. I'm tough. I'm going to deal with corruption. All of this was the establishment realizing that blue blood Rockefeller Republicanism was dead with the populace. So the Tea Party had rejected him. The Texas legislature had overridden his vetoes. Perry was in deep trouble. So he rebranded himself as the ultimate super patriot who was going to fight the new world order. And now he's positioned himself, along with Sarah Palin and others, to be the presidential candidate who gets the nomination in 2012. So you heard it here first. Rick Perry is going to announce all of his actions have already technically announced that he's running for president. All the speaking tours, the book, Everything he has said and done shows you that he's running. But from all of our sources, Fox News host, Fox News executive, people inside the Perry camp who work with him in the state government, other inside media sources I have in Austin, including Texas Monthly, have all confirmed that it has always been the establishment's plan to put Perry in the White House as our new imperial emperor. And then you have Perry, don't forget, breaking his pledge and saying, I'll never run for president. I'm all about Texas. We may have to have our own country. And exaggerating his Texas accent to now, I may break that pledge. Well, he proves himself to be a corrupt politician and not a statesman again. Just like Bill Clinton saying, I didn't have sex with that woman or George W. Bush's daddy saying, read my lips no new taxes, or Obama lying about ending the torture and not hiring lobbyists. Rick Perry is, like his father, the political establishment that can be described as nothing less than devilish. And so in the interest of time, I will give you one more example that didn't happen a couple years ago, but is happening right now. Texas unanimously voted in the House, 138 to 0, to enforce the law 
and to order the TSA not to sexually grope people that are attempting to travel on aircraft. And he used his minion, Lieutenant Governor David Dewhurst, according to Senator Patrick and others, to kill that bill in the Senate when they had every vote in the Senate on their side but one. They could have passed it with a overwhelming majority, but Dewhurst killed that bill. Then we fought for a special session. The special session was called, and I interviewed the different members of the State House, and they said, we just know Rick Perry, who's claimed he supports this bill, is going to put it on the special session. Only the governor can list the bills on the special session. And what did Rick Perry do? Rick Perry waited a few weeks as the Washington Times and Lou Rockwell and others begged him and said, you're our only hope. The nation's looking at you. What the TSA is doing is wrong. It's a federal power grab. Add it to the special session. Don't make the rumors true that you had your minions kill it in the Senate. And Rick Perry was silent. But finally, after he was confronted over and over again, he publicly lied. We're going to play a clip of that in a moment. And told people at book signings and other events that, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, there's just not time to get it into the session when the governor can expand the session out as long as he wants. And then he went on to tell a bigger lie. He said, we don't have the votes. When they have a near unanimous vote already lined up on record and the bill has been tentatively reintroduced, he just has to give it his seal of approval. That we're fed up with TSA tyranny, if you'd sign that. Woo! So I'm just wondering what your intent is on bringing the TSA legislation in the special They're session. Not gonna have it. They don't have the votes on either side. That's what I told them. I said, bring me a multitude of votes. Oh, uh, not a multitude, but, uh, and they never had the Well, votes. Senator Patrick wrote a letter two days ago indicating that there was the votes in the Senate, oh, right. and there's 112 uh, co-sponsors yeah. in the House. So in, that, in view I of that, in I view of that, it. would you consider bringing it up in view of that? Not enough time left in the session. So he's lied publicly. He used his minions inside, on record now, the State House to kill it quietly, and he didn't want his fingerprints on it, Senator Patrick and others exposed. Now, he waited to put it on the special session. As the public pressure mounted, he comes out and says, I can't, there's not time, and we don't have the votes, when they've got the votes with a supermajority in the House and the Senate to pass it right now. Letters have been written by State Rep. David Simpson, who authored the bill in the House, pointing out that now, the head of the Energy Commission was flying out of New Orleans with state reps. They pulled them aside, grabbed their testicles, crushed them, racking them in pain. And they said, why are you doing this, to punish me? And they said, yeah, we're doing this to punish you. The feds are so out of control, they're singling out our Texas leaders and our legislators and literally torturing them. Now, let me put this delicately. I, I was still feeling the effects of the pat down as I sat in my seat from New Orleans to Houston and then, and then Houston to Austin. And Rick Perry gets up and lies and says, we don't have the votes when he knows damn well it passed unanimously in the House. And the sponsor of the bill says they've got the votes to ram the sucker through and they've got all the votes on record. He's counting on your ignorance. He's counting on you to buy into the packaging of a Texan and of a patriot. When all Rick Perry will do is give Texas and America a bad name, and he'll betray you just like George W. Bush and Barack H. Obama. And he'll ensure that somebody like Ron Paul, who doesn't have the fancy hair of Rick Perry, but has the constitutionalist record, is defeated. If you so-called rhino conservatives buy into Rick Perry, you get what you deserve, just like you Obamanoid idiots. So there you have it. Rick Perry has announced he's running for president. I've got it from inside his campaign, and all his actions announce he's running. But he even betrayed you in that. This guy's like the devil saying, I pledge I'll never run for president now. Oh, I rethought my pledge. And another chapter we'll tell later is all the dirt on Rick Perry that the establishment is going to use to blackmail him. I'm Alex Jones reporting from the front lines of the Infowar. <laughs>